when it comes to why Miami's in this position in the first place as an eight seed, a lot of it has to do with their three-point shooting. And when we look ahead to the NBA Finals, I think there's some context that we need to keep in mind. And Aaron, I know uh, in terms of figuring out what sort of opponent the Heat will be facing and what kind of challenge they may have as far as their three-point shooting is concerned, uh, you came across something rather interesting. Yeah, so I, for our um, earlier segment, was looking at, you know, Caleb Martin and all the possible candidates to lead the series in three pointers made. And when I was, I was just curious, like, Oh, I wonder how good the nuggets are defending the three. So a good team rankings. And I was shocked. They're the second best team behind new Orleans defending the three. And I was like, wow. Um, So I, my immediate takeaway was like, Ooh, cause I mean, we all know this kind of how the heat got here, right? They depend on that three. And if the Nuggets are really good at defending it, then I think they could be in a bit of trouble. Yeah. Yeah, Joe. I mean, when when we're talking about three-point shooting, I mean, how do you sort of see this shaping up as far as uh, Miami's uh, chances to continue that, that hot run they had against Boston and maybe what Denver could do to slow them down? Uh, Yeah, there's a couple things here. What I find interesting about that Denver number is obviously great record, great team all year. So then you have a team trying to play catch up. So I wonder um, if the volume of the opposition of Denver had anything to do with the percentage, right? Where where they're ranked so highly in three-point defense because maybe you're taking some threes that you wouldn't normally king and it just becomes a volume thing at the end uh it's an interesting angle because the heat come in and look at what they've done this postseason with the three-point shooting it has been off the charts it is much higher than what we saw in the regular season i believe it's a spike yeah so they're shooting 39 percent on their threes in the playoffs that's that's the best and during the season they shot 34 percent so is negative regression going to set in a little bit here, continue this? Uh, a lot of changes with the with the players that were on the court from the regular season to the postseason. Same thing with the number of minutes that were logged. So I wonder, I don't want to go too far with the Denver three-point defense. Obviously, they're going to game plan for it, right? Because that's how the Heat have been winning. They're hitting these threes. So they're going to defend it, but I, I wouldn't say that okay, now I'm going to fade Miami Heat players because they've been so terrific from the side. And they they know they're going to get killed in the paint. I mean, there's just no way around it, right? I mean, that, that uh-huh. Jokic-Bam matchup in, with their history and the size of the bigs that the Heat have at their disposal is just a huge mismatch. So I, I would think it's going to be a way that Spolstra is going to attack them. Yeah, certainly. And I think you bring up a really good point when it comes to Denver's three-point shooting defense that the metric itself, the stat itself, is a little wonky for a variety of mm-hmm. reasons. Yes, you can defend the three-point uh, shot better in terms of close on the shooter, having a you know much smaller distance between the nearest defender and the shooter, things like that. So certainly there were things that Boston could have done better uh, to limit Miami's uh, prolific shooting. But at the same time, if you have a hot shooting team, then oftentimes there's not that much you can do about it. And especially when you're talking about Miami, what we saw in this last series was downright historic. Uh, Lev Akabas, uh, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing the name, but he brought up a really interesting stat here. The Miami Heat hit 58% of their wide open threes in the Eastern Conference Finals versus the Celtics. 58% of their wide open threes, that's the highest percentage any team has shot on wide open threes in any series in the last 10 years. This is largely why the Heat knocked off the Celtics. It's not necessarily because the Celtics are not as talented as we thought, or, yeah, I mean, their defense could have been a lot better, but it wasn't so bad to the point of absurdity. Instead, it was the Heat, whenever they had an opportunity to knock down a wide open three, meaning that there's at least six feet between the nearest defender and the shooter, they were making them. And they weren't making them in the regular season. And 58% is a really, really high number. Let's add some perspective to that. 
The Nuggets made 40.7% of their wide open threes in their series sweep against the Lakers. That's sent lower than what the Heat did. And the Nuggets got the sweep. So 40.7%, which is not a bad number at all. That was more than enough uh, for Denver to knock off the Lakers. But what the Heat did, and still needing seven games in which to do it, that to me is fascinating. As for Miami's other series in terms of their wide open three-point shooting, 42%, 38%. And then in the regular season, it was 37%. So they were shooting more than 20% better in that seven-game series against Boston than during the regular season. Now, look. They do have some good shooters out there. They were fourth in wide open three-point shooting in last mm-hmm. year's regular season. So it's certainly possible that this is more like what we should be accustomed to seeing for Miami. But 58% is a really, really high number. And I just don't know how you can expect that to continue in a grueling series against the Nuggets. To me, they are due for regression, and Mm -hmm. it could come suddenly. Well, I think also, you know, going back to that three-point leader prop, you know, we both landed on Caleb Martin. In that first series against the Bucs, he only made seven. Then against the Knicks, he made 10. Then against the Celtics, 22. And so that, to me, was such a big discrepancy that I'm thinking, gosh, it's a little dicey. He's obviously getting way more production. He got hot. He's taking much more. Will that continue? That's what I was asking myself. But the value was there on betting him. You said, what, 13 to 1, 14 to 1? And he was by far the leader in that last series out of all the candidates you know so it is interesting they all the heat also have so many guys that can get hot from three it's not just one or two right yeah i i also think uh we can bring back that conversation we had very early in the show at the end of a segment about three that threes made prop that so many of us are interested in by the way just talk about being smarter about it shop around the difference in these numbers on specific players to lead the series and threes made, it's double, triple. And some of the stuff that Aaron was seeing in her state that were five to seven, five to one, seven to one, we were seeing 13 to one in our markets or stuff that was seven Crazy. to one. You know, Struce, I, I see at 21 to one by me to, to lead the way with threes. I think that's a great way to attack that. Go with heat. Uh, the Murray, okay, I get that he's a favorite, minus 155. I think that's a joke. Porter's the second favorite. And then because you don't know which Heat player is going to have the volume from the outside, that creates some value. Because, sure, we could tell you a story where it's Martin or it's Vincent or it's Strews. Mm-hmm. Interestingly, I haven't seen Duncan Robinson listed. And because he's not there for game one, uh, these sports books decided not Tyler Hero, which – I think pe- people would have bet that if you threw a big number on it, just like they, mm-hmm. they would have fallen in love with that story. Oh, huh? Hero's going to enter the series and he's going to go off and, you know, he's six man award, award winner, blah, blah, blah. Um, I was a little surprised by that. But, I mean, all the value is, is in these Heat players on made threes. Yeah. And with those stat categories, it's hard to make a case for anybody but Jokic in rebounds and assists. 